All right, everyone, we start off today with what could be very, very big news. It looks like Trump may actually get back on Twitter. This fulfills something that I say that he arguably needs to do in order to win the general election. Primaries, probably not. Um, Ron DeSantis flubbed his own campaign launch, so there really is no other viable contender in the field. We'll wait and see what happens with polling. I don't think Trump's worried about that. But Trump loves a grudge match, and he loves making mean tweets. I speculate that there's probably something in the works between him and now Twitter-exclusive Tucker Carlson. That would probably make sense. It would probably also literally break Twitter, <laughs> which uh, Ron DeSantis' campaign announcement didn't. Uh, Twitter broke itself for that one. By the way, since Elon Musk and some of his team appear to be DeSantis fans, watch out, Tucker, if you have Trump aboard for technical difficulties, because... I mean, we've seen some weird shenanigans over the last few years. You know, why would it? Why would it end? <laughs> it wouldn't make any sense for it to. It looks like tweets back on our menu, though, because Donald Trump, as of last night, acquired Twitter Blue. Now, this could be Elon gave him Twitter Blue. Um, he's done that with other users. Basically, trying to coax him back on the platform, maybe smooth things over. Of course, they've exchanged some words before, um, which, you know, is not necessarily to Trump's credit in that particular matchup, considering that was his main platform of use for years. Uh, of course, he was banned from it for spurious reasons. He's now been let back on. Uh, partially, he's muzzled by truth social exclusivity. If I were Donald Trump, I would breach that contract. I would tear it up and I would say, look, you know, I'll pay whatever fine you've got. Uh, I'm going to get 100 times more engagement on Twitter. I'll be able to lead the news cycle instead of the news cycle leading me. I'll be able to get things out to people without any filter, uh, and it'll be a significant number of people that I'm doing that with. Um, of course, having Twitter blue is slightly important for that because you get algorithmically recommended instead of algorithmically demoted. There's a reason why I use Twitter blue. It's, it's the same reason. As a content creator, it just makes sense. It's a pittance per month for what you're getting in return. Um, really in, in a case like mine, where I'm catering to a six-figure audience uh, cross-platform, you know, having another place to uh, share my thoughts in a pithy form just makes sense. Um, if Trump does get back on Twitter, like let's say that later today, and, and I hope this happens, he just tweets something totally off the chain, totally random, uh, or even just like one word. If he, if he were to tweet Kafefe right now, he'd probably end up with five million people retweeting it. Uh, <laughs> so... I mean, he's, he's basically sitting aside for all this time, he's been let back on Twitter, sulking on Truth Social, uh, which, uh, you know, is sta has stabilized as a network, but really it's a core audience sort of thing. That's great for Trump to be able to communicate directly with his core fans, and he probably should keep using it for that purpose because he can say whatever the fuck he wants on Truth Social. On Twitter, where he has to mildly filter himself, Musk has overhauled some of the rules, so the censorship is much less draconian, and I, I don't think Elon Musk wants to destroy his platform by banning Trump a second time. I think that might be the straw that breaks the camel's back. All of the uh, hit pieces by liberals at the Atlantic and stuff would actually come true about Twitter if he were to do that, maybe. I think that Trump uh, would, would reach out to an enormous number of people. I think he's crazy if, you know, at least prior to the general election, he doesn't use Twitter uh, for some purpose. Uh, he's got the capability of connecting with people that are sympathetic towards him and can host him and hold debates, uh, hold conversations, all these things. We're moving away from the old legacy era, and, and DeSantis is part of this too at this point with his campaign launch. We've moved away from the old, I will tell you what to think, legacy media model. You tune into the TV, you buy the newspaper, you read the opinions of people that are paid large sums of money. They're government co-opted or adjacent or even government assets outright. Um, they have extreme political bias, usually in favor of the Uniparty. The editorial board certainly do, which is why outsider opinions are squashed usually by these groups. Um, that used to be the way that you got your news, or, or tuning into the radio or something. At best, you've got a local shock jock or something in, uh, before the rise of satellite radio, which uh, is not necessarily the medium that it once was as well, in the era of live streaming online. Kind of superfluous now, isn't it? And now, you've got hundreds of thousands of significant content creators all across the world that are capable of analyzing things often more intelligently than the legacy media ever did, and they're actually independent. 
Like, for instance, 100% of my income comes from you, the people watching this, through donations, book sales, it says super chats, etc., etc. Not a penny of it comes from a corporation unless some company owner is deciding to uh, join me on Patreon or something like that. Um, and so I'm capable of being more independent in my content creation. Trump thrives in such an atmosphere. So too does DeSantis, uh, minus the glitches. He chose to launch a mainline viable presidential campaign, or viable until the announcement itself at least, uh, on Twitter, uh, which was a smart move. Not so much smart the manner in which he handled himself after 20 frustrating minutes of non-stop glitching and calls falling out, but it is a sign of the times. Meanwhile, Joe Biden likes to tweet, well, his staff do. I don't think he even understands how to operate a smartphone. He's, he's used to the old clunky phones of the 1970s or something like that, like, or 80s, like Miami Vice phone or something. like. That's basically the only one his wife will allow him to have. Otherwise, he'd be sexting a bunch of underage people, probably. Uh, I hope that Trump gets back on Twitter. My hope, and, and there are some in his campaign that are kind of insinuating that he doesn't, uh, does plan to get back, my, including Benny there. Uh, I'm, I'm really hoping so, because I could use some mean tweets. It would be hilarious. The reaction is hilarious. It's peak showmanship. It's exactly what Trump needs to do to get the energy higher. Uh, it, it's exactly what people want, too. We've been starved of any form of humor within politics that doesn't involve memes about Joe Biden falling up the stairs or uh, Hillary Clinton shitting her pants, basically, for the last couple of years, and it's become frustrating. Legacy media reporting is dry and boring. People want a show. Put on a show. Let's have a gladiatorial match here and have Trump uh, berating uh, uh, Joe Biden directly on his tweets. By the way, another thing that Donald Trump should be doing, and this is advice, explicitly, if anyone's adjacent to his campaign, get this idea to him. Right now, you are outflanked by DeSantis fans when it comes to community notes on Twitter. Just saying. Uh, I, I see it because I use community notes. It's a two-to-one. Uh, DeSantis fans have the most disproportionate reach, I think, on community notes, or at least the, as far as the number of notes themselves that are proposed, of basically anyone. About the only other group that's about that high up are people that are obsessed with the concept of pseudoscience as applied to seismic uh, things. Like, oh my god, there's been a solar flare. Look out for the 5.0 coming in the southeast. I don't know why, but for some reason that's a thing. As though you really need to fact check that and the average person didn't realize that it was potentially spurious pseudoscience, but uh, I digress. Um, so hopefully Trump is coming back to Twitter. If the fact that he got Twitter blue, and there are people that are, that before he got Twitter blue, by the way, that were saying, yeah, yeah, you, we're talking to him about it, we're thinking about that possibility, I think that mean tweets might actually return. Finally, our lives will be complete. That's about all. Peace out.